This is James McKillis, the fighting cowboy. You watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Brad Berkeley. It's a knockout. Hi, this is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and you're watching RSR video email bag show with your host, Bad Brad. Now, at this point, Bad Brad wants me to say, forget about it, but I'm not going to say it because it's stupid. I mean, come on now. Brad, what are you doing? You think you're some half-assed wise guy or what? So I'm not saying it, okay? Forget about it. I'm not saying it. Hi, this is Sean O'Grady. You're watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Brad. Forget about it. Hello, this is Jackie Lopez, and you are watching the RSR video email bag show with Bad Hi. Brad. Hi, this is Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. And you're watching the Ringside Report video email bag show with my main man, Bad Brad Berkwit. Forget about it. Oh, I got a little gift for you. Uh, maybe no, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> Look at this. See that? This is the favorite thing that I have on this earth. And Rocky Marciano, give me that. You know what it was? His cufflink. Huh? And now I'm giving it to you. And it, it's got to be like a, like an angel on your shoulder. See? <clears throat> and if you ever get hurt and you feel that you're going down, this little angel is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to say, Get up, you son of a bitch! Because Mickey loves you. Thanks, man. All right. I love you, too. Jesus. Go after him, kid. Go ahead. Thanks. You was the issue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ringside Report video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Now, here's your host, the man with the fedora, the Pinky Ring, and the New York Thing, Bad Brad Berkwit. Hey, folks, it's Saturday night, and it's time for another RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Now, remember, when we hit 1,500 subscribers, we're at 1,410 subscribers right now. We're going to give away this great book, Off the Ropes, The Ron Lyle Story, written by the late Candace Toth. All you have to do is hit that button, whatever corner it's in, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Let's have a conversation. You don't always have to agree with my opinions. Just remember, to get respect, you must show respect. Now, if you want to be on my next show or future shows, send your questions into ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. All right, without further ado, forget about it. Let's get into your great questions tonight. First up, Bad Brad, enjoyed seeing you back and pulling zero punches about Javante Davis. I keep hearing the line from my favorite movie of all time, A Bronx Tale. The saddest thing is wasted talent. It sure is, pal. I want to get your take on GGG's upcoming title defense against a guy or a guy I nor any of my buddies have ever heard of named Camille Smyrta, and I'm probably saying that wrong. S Z E says Myrta, something like that. I'm he's saying it wrong, I'm sure, and I'm definitely saying it wrong. And I've never heard of him. My take on that is a fugazi. I don't even know how this guy got a title shot. Never heard of him. I looked him up uh, after I read an article online. Uh, actually, I was editing an article from uh, Vinny Glory Days Lucci, who's going to be handicapping that fight, which really the fight is handicapped itself. That would be coming up this week on Ringside Report. I didn't even know he was getting a title shot. I didn't see it. I don't know how the guy's getting a title shot. Uh, the only name I know on his record for the most part is a long and a tooth faded former champion, Kasim Uno, who he beat. Uh, Uma, Uma hasn't been his best in many, many years. So that's not really impressive. It is a name, uh, building up a record, but he's got, I think, five KOs, so he really doesn't have any power. It's just going to be basically when does GGG want to get him out of there? Does he want to get some rounds in? What does he want to do? If it was me and I was GGG, bada bing, bada boom, get him out of there. Don't take no chances of a headbutt, a cut, injury, or whatever. And you never know in boxing, 
things can happen. So get him out there quick. But I don't know how this guy got a title shot. It reminds me of a lot of other fighters over the years. They got title shots, and their promoter paid some fuzzles under the table to get him a title shot. I don't know if that's the case in this one, but uh, I don't really have too many thoughts other than GGG is going to destroy him. All right. That was Buddy G from Stafford, Virginia, just in case I didn't say your name. All right. Next up, BB. Long time since I wrote in, but when I got the alert, he had posted a new show. I couldn't get my questions off fast enough. Questions? Okay, pal. Let's get them answered. First, will Wilder versus Joshua finally happen in 2020? All right, let me stop there because I missed a question last week. Uh, last bag, I should say, because I got so carried away about Javante Davis. That was part of the guy's question, and he asked about uh, Joshua uh, versus Wilder. He asked who would win. But uh, let's go ahead and address that one right now. You know, it's all about the Benjamins, baby, right? That's what they say. So the fight, if Wilder gets past Fury, I think he will. I think he's going to knock him out this time, but you never know. Um, Joshua, I think Povekin might be his mandatory. I can't remember who it is for Joshua. So that fight will probably have to go off or whoever his mandatory is unless they pay him to step aside. It's only February. If Wilder gets past Fury in the rematch, doesn't get injured, no cuts, nothing like that, why not? Let's make the make the fight, okay? It's going to dictate a lot of money. It can be overseas because you know Joshua's got a bigger following than Deontay Wilder does. They can have it any place in England. It's going to sell out. It's going to be a huge, huge fight. And it will make them both money. Now, I do think it's going to happen because I think the money is just going to be to the point where they, they can't refuse it. Now, I will reserve my opinion on who uh, will win that fight, even though I pretty much have an opinion now and I've said it, but I'm going to hold it back uh, until the fight is made and signed. So I do think it will happen in 2020, maybe July, August, September time frame. We'll see. It needs to be made for boxing. All right. Your next question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second, when will we see Jamal Charlo face GGG when promoters decide that they want to put on the best fights. Jamal Charlo, GGG, at this point in the game, is a pick em fight, okay? I'm not going to uh, say a prediction yet till that is signed, but that's who I would like to see him fight next, Jamal Charlo. Uh, I think Charlo's called out GGG 100%, but if he has, you know, let's make the fight. Let's go back to the old saying, the old adage in boxing, the best fight the best if they want to be called the best. So that's how it goes. That's what Sugar Ray did with Tommy Hearns and Duran did against uh, Leonard and Hagler did against Hearns and Duran and Leonard. Okay, so the best have to fight the best. And let's give it to him. It's a good fight. Last one. He says, and he says last one. <laughs> last one and hope all three can get on your show. You're getting three, pal. Who would win in a dream match between Duran and Pryor? Well, obviously, folks, that's Roberto Duran and Pryor. And this question is, questions is from John B. from Pensacola, Florida. My old stomping grounds. I was stationed there when I first joined the Navy from 1986 to 1990. And then I went overseas and then the war kicked off. I was in Signal Sicily. So, great question, great dream match. Everybody knows Aaron Pryor, if you didn't know, is my favorite. The Hawk fighter of all time. Okay? But I got to be fair. Durant, greatest lightweight of all time. Now, he skipped Junior Walterweight, and he moved up to Walterweight and faced Sugar Ray Leonard, and he beat him in Montreal back in 1980. And then we know the infamous rematch with the No Mas was forget about it. So, who would win in that fight at 140? Now, remember, Pryor was a lightweight at the beginning, but he couldn't get big fights, so he moved to Junior Walterweight, and Sugar Ray was a lightweight, I believe, and he moved up to Walterweight because he pretty much avoided Aaron Pryor. I know people have difference of opinions on that, but Duran Leonard, look, it's really a pick em fight. Anybody can win that fight. You got the the uh, fortitude of Aaron Pryor is going to come out and throw punches and bunches, and if he gets knocked down, very good chance he will because Duran was hands of stone, baby. He could drop him, but Aaron's probably going to get back up. Very good chance he's going to get back up. And Duran pretty much had it a really, really good chin. I know Tommy Hearns. Now, Duran was, I'm not going to say long in the tooth, but he was past his prime at that point. Still, even though he still came back and beat Orion Barkley in 1989, you know, that was a hell of a fight. But he was past his prime in 84, okay, when he fought and he got knocked out. I think it was the second round. It was the second round against uh, Tommy Hearns. I mean, he went, 
September. He knocked, uh, Hearns knocked out Duran like Hearns knocked out Papino Cuevas in 1980 when he won a WBA welterweight title. Papino went down, he could have counted to 100 million, and he still wasn't getting up. Pick him fight. I'm not going to say Duran couldn't win the fight. I'm going to give the edge to Pryor on a decision, but Duran definitely could win the fight. It wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't be an upset if Duran won the fight. Um, bring in with your opinions. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear your breakdown, how you see Duran versus Pryor. I'm going with Pryor by a very, very hard fight. I'm 15 rounds now. 15 round hard fought split decision. Duran wins. Would not be a shocker. All right, John B. Here's all the answers to your great questions. All right, on that note, the Aaron Pryor versus Roberto Duran dream match. And God rest your soul, Aaron. I truly do miss you. And Alexis is my number two. I miss both of you guys. May you rest in peace. But on that note, we're going to take a short. Hey, folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And what do Gene Fulmer, Aaron Pryor, James Whip Tillis, Davey Pearl, Joey Bishop, Al Martino, Jerry Bale, and Roy Jones Jr. all have in common? Well, they are some of the many interviews in my boxing book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of this book, go to AuthorHouse.com. Again, that's AuthorHouse.com. And if you would like it personally autographed, all you have to do is pay postage and handling to St. John, Indiana, back to your location, and I will sign it the way you would like it, or I can put a personal description that I think you would like in it. All right? Forget about it. Hey folks, this is Bad Brad Burke with the host of the RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Forget about it. And if you would like to sponsor or advertise on the RSR video email bag show, yours truly, send all business inquiries to Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's Ringside Report 2014 at gmail.com. And remember, as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. All right, folks, we're now back. And if you forgot who I was on the commercial break, I am the man with the pinky ring and the New York thing. Forget about it, Bad Brad Burkwood. And this is the RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Now, remember, leave your comments below to get respect. All you got to do is show respect. You have a difference of opinion. That's great. Go for it. I have no problem with that. All right, now, if you want to be on my future shows, ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com, ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Send your questions in. Make sure you put your name, city, state, or country that you're from, and get you on the show. All right, next up, Bad Brad. I wanted to give you props for breaking Ringside Report out to entertainment on top of boxing and MMA. Well, thank you, pal. It was sad to see that we lost Robert Conrad today and nice tribute to him in RSR. Yeah, it was sad. It's part of my childhood. Loved him on Wild Wild West. Loved the commercials with the Ever Ready Battery when he put it on his shoulder and dared you to knock it off his shoulder. That was so 70s. And I used to love him on Battle of the Network Stars. Remember those in the 70s, folks? We had people from TV shows battling on each side, tug of war, running through tires and uh, swimming and different things. Yeah, I wish they'd bring those back. It was such a sweeter time in America. It truly was. But uh, thank you. All credit goes to my entertainment writer, Jeffrey Hutchell, who wrote that article. Great job, as always, on that. And he goes on to say, I wanted to ask you, who are some of your favorite performances by an actor who played a boxer in the movies? P.T. from Katona, New York. Katona, New York, and Alice Bell. I used to go to Fox Lane High School in Bedford, and we used to go to Katona, and we used to hang out and party over there back in the day. Some of my favorite uh, performances by an actor... And as a boxer, well, I'm going to say off the top, champion with the late great. We just lost him. God rest his soul. 103 years old. So we're sad, but what a life that he led. Kurt Douglas, champion. Great performance. John Garfield in the original Body and Soul 1947. The setup with Robert Ryan. Great movie. Of course, I love Stallone as Rocky. Okay, a lot of people knock him. No, come on. He was fantastic in Rocky. He was. Rocky V, forget about it. But Rocky VI, I enjoyed when he came back. Rocky V, forget about it. But Rocky 1 through 4, but especially 1 through 3, the original Rocky through 3, fantastic movies. Uh, who else? Let me see. Who else do we got? Uh, 
I enjoyed, he played him. I enjoyed, though they took too many creative liberties. I enjoyed James, uh, Russell Crowe's uh, Jim Braddock. That was a great movie, Cinderella Man. But they took too many creative liberties. Max Bear was not how they portrayed him. That I didn't like. Ron Howard, shame, shame, shame on you for that. Who else? Let's see. Um, who else? Well, Terry Malloy was a boxer, but he didn't. He portrayed a boxer, but there was no boxing in it. On the waterfront, I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum, which is what I am. It was you, Charlie. It was you. Now, everybody knows I don't like that word bum, but he used it in the context of the movie. So no fighter is a bum. Not even you, Terry Malloy. But hey, on the waterfront, ex-fighter, great movie. So those are some of the performances of fighters as boxers that I really, really enjoyed. And I also enjoyed, even though it was funny as hell, uh, I think it was Bootney, Fonsworth, Jimmy Walker, and um, Uptown Saturday Night, I think was the one where he played the boxer and he had to hypnotize him. Hilarious. So Pete, there's some of my picks. All right, last question goes to Bad Brad, first time writing in this year, and Happy New Year to you, my brother. Well, thank you, Sam, to you, pal. Do you have any episodes of the Bad Brad Berkwood show coming up? Let me stop you there. We don't have anything on the books yet, but we will be shooting hopefully in the next month, month and a half, uh, and bringing it back. Our last uh, guest was Eric Jakubowski, the brother of Marty Jakubowski, and uh, that was September. We took a little hiatus. Some things have gone on uh, that we haven't been able to shoot. But we are bringing it back, and we're going to be bringing a lot of business people on. So make sure you check it out. Subscribe to the channel because it's not just the RSR video email bag show. It's Ring Star Report Web TV. I'm sorry, that's Ring Star Report Web TV channel is the name of the channel. It's not just the Bad Brad Berkwood show. It's also the RSR video email bag show that you're watching. Also, uh, post fight coverage and everything else uh, that we may be doing in the future. So tune in. We will have future guests, and thank you. For asking about it. He goes on to say, I want to ask you so far, out of the many you shot last year, who was your favorite guest? Mike G from Washington, D.C. Okay, so Mike G, excuse me, we're sticking to the theme of the Bad Brad Berkman show. Okay, that's cool. Got no problem with that. I love doing that show. Love doing interviews. Been doing them now for 23 years. You know, it's a hard question because really everybody that I have on, there's a different reason why I enjoy that show. Uh, it's hard to always pick one. I get asked that about my book, Boxing Interviews of Lifetime. Who's your favorite interview of all time? And I can take the easy way out and say Aaron Pryor because he's my favorite fighter. And he was my first interview I ever did. And he was one of my favorites. But there's so many for so many different reasons. So I'm going to not say a favorite. I'll say favorites. And no, I'm not because I don't want someone to see us and feel like, you left mine out. You told me it was, you really enjoyed I enjoyed them all. There hasn't been a guest on yet. And I mean, even if there was, and I didn't call him out by name, if I said, well, I really didn't enjoy that show, and probably I would call him out because I, you know, I pull no punches. I like them all. I, I love them all for different reasons because um, I am blessed with, and I appreciate it. I look at it as a blessing from above to be able to sit with people across from them uh, and make them feel comfortable where they um, say things that they might normally not say uh, and give heartfelt stories. And, you know, when you're blessed with something, whatever it is, use it. Use it to a positive. And I've always tried to do that in my life, whether it was in my military career, boxing, uh, doing interviews, uh, whatever it may be. Always take a talent that's a blessing from the man above and uh, do your best with it. Okay? Materialistic things, I'm not trying to get a whole holy roller thing, but I'm going to make a point. And it's, it's my opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. Uh, materialistic things that people pray for, I don't believe in that. God doesn't give you a car. He doesn't give you uh, a house. He doesn't give you the new jacket. He gives you blessings to do great things. And maybe it's you, you're skilled in something and you go and you get a great job and you make a lot of fazos. Okay, so you took a blessing uh, that God gave you, but he didn't give you a blessing to uh, have a house or a car. I don't believe in that. I know a lot of people do. I don't. So I feel I've taken the blessings that God has given me parlayed them into doing the interview show and doing interviews for the last 23 years since 1997. And I thank everybody over the years that have uh, given me some of the most touching uh, and moving compliments about different things that they either read when I was doing them in print or watching them. So we're going to continue to do them. It's actually my favorite thing of all boxing uh, things that I've done today. All right. So that's another RSR video email bag show in the can. Forget about it. And if you forgot who I was one more time, I am the man with the pinky ring. 
in the New York thing. Forget about it, Bad Bear Berkeley. And I am the host of the RSR Video Email Back Show. And we're closing out like this as we always do. As Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad Brad out.